Hey everybody, Pastor Matthew here. Welcome back. We are continuing through the New Testament, lesson number two. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and we talked about that funny word that uh, kind of associates them together. They're called the synoptic Gospels because there's a lot of stories within them that are very similar uh, to each other. Um, and so we call them Synoptic Gospels. Today, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John, which is a little bit different. And we'll talk about why as we get there. But first, let's get looking at our discussion questions for the week. <clears throat> Here they are. So the first one, in John, Jesus likes to compare himself to different things. For instance, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, or I am living water. What do you think Jesus means by these two statements, and why might they be important for us to know? Number two, right now, invent an imaginary product that you are trying to sell to me. Tell me what it is, what it does, and then write two or three sentences telling me why I should purchase uh, your product. And then along that line, number three, now imagine that somebody else invents something very similar to your invention. And now tell me why I should buy yours and not somebody else's. How is yours better than theirs? Uh, and then number four, complete this sentence in a creative way that will help me to understand Jesus better. Jesus is like blank because blank. And the example I give is Jesus is like the sun because he brings light into the world. And then number five, uh, have your, your parents, your families answer that question uh, as well. All right, so our Bible story today, <clears throat> like I said, we're doing the Gospel of John. So we are in John chapter 3. Verses 1 through 21. And so that is the story here. And I'll read it. It says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and what we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands, in, stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth and comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that God... that that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Yeah, okay, I guess it just ends there. I must have read that wrong. Okay, anyway, before we get to the notes, let's talk about this. So, if you ever have time to sit and read the Gospel of John, or all the Gospel books, what I'm going to tell you is that you're going to notice that John is different uh, from the other three Gospels. John tends to not tell some of the big stories that are found in the other Gospels. But yet he also adds in stories that are not found in the other three, like this one that we just read. Um, if you remember, there's a story about Jesus being taken out into the, uh, into the desert or the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Well, that one's not in the Gospel of John. And then the, the story of the transfiguration. Remember when Jesus goes up on the mountain 
um, and he's with Peter, James, and John, and they're up there, and Jesus transfigures, and he's all white and bright and, and shiny and things like that. Well, that's not in John either, um, and that's a pretty big story. And now, you remember before Easter, <clears throat> Sunday before Easter, we call that Palm Sunday, Remember where we remember Jesus uh, entering Jerusalem on a donkey and there's people shouting and praising him and uh, we, you know, we wave the palm branches and worship and we get to take them home. Uh, palm Sunday, of course, is always the week before Easter. And that's because the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they place that story a week before uh, the resurrection story or Easter. But in the Gospel of John, the Palm Sunday story occurs as one of the first few things Jesus does in his ministry, like way, way before uh, he ever comes back to Jerusalem and dies on the cross. Um, yeah, it's very different. John is very different in how he writes his gospel. Um, if we think about even when Jesus dies, John likes to use symbolism. He likes to compare Jesus to different things every once in a while. And so John likes to compare Jesus dying on the cross uh, to, to the event of Passover. Remember the, the, the story of Passover um, when, uh, you know, the ten plagues in Egypt, um, and then there was the, the tenth plague, which was the, it was supposed to be the death of the firstborn, and all the Israelites were supposed to go get a lamb um, and put the lamb's blood on their door so that their firstborn uh, wouldn't be killed by an angel of God in the middle of the night. Yeah, so they would kill the lamb, and they would put the, the blood on their doorpost, and then the angel would pass by their home, and everything would be fine. Um, <clears throat> and so all the people that John was writing to would know this story. They would know that. And so the way that John writes his gospel, uh, one of the ways that he writes it is so that the people would see that Jesus is now that lamb uh, that needs to be killed so that everybody else can be saved by his blood. Okay, we talk about the blood of Jesus or the blood of Christ. Yeah, and so John wants to tell his story in a way so that everybody knows that Jesus is supposed to be that lamb because that's something, that's a story that's very, very important to them uh, as a people. And so, yeah, John portrays Jesus and his life so drastically different than the other Gospels uh, because he wants to use a lot of symbolism. Um, he isn't as concerned about, you know, this happens here, this happens here, this happens here in a chronological order. He's not concerned about that. He's more concerned about showing Jesus in a very different way that evokes a lot of deep thought. He wants you to think about uh, what's going on. Um, and so what else can I say? Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, this story. Let's talk about this story. Um, the story of Nicodemus. Uh, that we just read. In the story uh, of Nicodemus, Jesus talks about being born again um, or being baptized. And so Nicodemus has no idea what Jesus is talking about. And he's like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Jesus. I'm, I'm an old guy. I can't just go back into my mom and be born again. It's just, what are you talking about? Um, and so Nicodemus doesn't understand a, th a word of what uh, Jesus is saying. And so Jesus says, you have to be born again. You have to be born of water and the Spirit. Um, and Jesus explains that uh, in the story. And we understand that to be baptism. We need to, uh, we need to die to sin and raise to, rise to new life. I mean, when you were baptized, uh, you were baptized. I, I know you were. Um, you were born again. Uh, you died to your life of sin. You were born into a world founded by hope in Jesus. And so, yeah, there's plenty of confusion in this story. Uh, there's a lot of confusion in the Gospel of John. Uh, but John allows us to, to see a unique spin on a lot of different stories about Jesus. Uh, things that might have us to really think a little bit more about what it means to understand uh, who Jesus is and what Jesus does. Like thinking about the, the purpose of his death on the cross compared to the festival of Passover and the, the link being the, the lamb. Um, and then we also might think about in this story of Nicodemus, the, you know, the miracle of birth um, compared to the sacrament of baptism. And the link here uh, being water and the, the spirit. Um, and so things like that. So yeah, John, is, John can be a confusing gospel, but he's also a really, he's got a lot of good stuff in there too. So, all right, so some notes here. 
Uh, not much different because we're still talking about the Gospels. So the four Gospels here are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic Gospels. John is just kind of on his own. Um, and then the Gospel equals uh, means good news. We talked about that uh, last week too, but it's never a bad idea to uh, uh, bring that back. All right, our questions again for the week. I'll explain them a little bit more. So number one, in John, Jesus likes to compare himself to different things. He'll say, I am the bread of life, or I am the living water. Uh, what do you think Jesus means by these two statements in particular? Um, and why might they be important for us to know? Why do, why do we, what's so important about him saying, I am the bread of life? Uh, what do you think that means? Um, if, if you heard him say that, what, what do you think he's trying to, to say? Or I am living water. What exactly does he mean by that? All right, so number two, this is where we're going to get to have a little fun. I want you to think of an invention, any invention. I want you to invent something uh, that you're trying to sell me, okay? I want you to tell me what it is. I want you to tell me what it does. And then I want you to write two or three sentences telling me why I should get it, why I need it, okay? Invent anything. I, I really want to see you guys go creative on this. All right, then question number three. Now I want you to imagine that somebody else invents something very similar to your invention. Okay, so you've done all this work, uh, you think it's the most perfect thing ever, and then somebody comes along and invents something um, that's, that can do almost the same thing. Now I want you to tell me why I should buy yours and not somebody else's. I want to know why is yours better than theirs, okay? Be creative. Get creative in your answers. Tell me, tell me why yours is better. And then another creative uh, question, number four. Complete this uh, statement here in a creative way so that I can understand Jesus better. Because uh, like Jesus talks about, like in our first question, you know, I am the, the bread of life or I am the living water. Um, but I want you to be creative. I want you to think of something that uh, you think of when you think of Jesus. So Jesus is like blank because blank. And the example that I put here is Jesus is like the sun because he brings light to the world. Okay? So be creative on that. And then I want your, your parents, your families to be creative with uh, the next question too. Uh, I want them to answer that question as well. Jesus is like blank because blank. All right? Those are the five questions that you have. And yes, there's a bonus question uh, once you get into the Google form. Um, as we always tend to do, I like to see what you guys are thinking on the bonus questions too. So. All right, well, we are just about done, just under 15 minutes. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll talk about this and see where it goes. Next week, uh, we're going to start talking about, um, I think we're going to get into the book of Acts, I think, in the st which, which is the story of the, 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 the birth of the, the Christian church. Okay, everything up to this point in the Bible is all Jewish. And now, in the next section, we're going to start getting around to Christianity. Uh, it comes around after Jesus dies. So that being said, let's pray, and then uh, you can uh, go answer your questions for the week. Let's pray. Lord God, you give us the account of your uh, of the life of your Son as a gift uh, to help us live out our life as a reflection of his. Help us to think about why it's important for us to know Jesus uh, and why it is far better for us to live for him uh, than against him as we go about our lives at home uh, and at school. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. Good luck. Have fun on those questions, especially those inventions. I can't wait to talk about them, and we will uh, see you guys soon. All right? Have a good week. Bye.